like to give a shout out to Roberta, our finance camp, uh, a finance campaigner with the Sunrise Projects, uh, which is part of BlackRock's big problem. Last year, they had a win in getting BlackRock to divest from thermal coal. She will join us later to discuss next steps. Uh, this webinar uh, will be recorded and posted on YouTube for everyone to share. Uh, for those of you um, joining us on Zoom and Facebook, if you can introduce yourselves in the chat box or comment section on Facebook and tell us your first name and where you are from and what inspired you to join the call. Our guests today are Amanda, Gaia, Diego, Esteban. Pitzer College students who developed a campus campaign requesting that their college divest uh, the school's endowment from BlackRock. The student senate passed this request overwhelmingly, 16 to 1. Amanda Nagaya, Diego Esteban, welcome. I'm going to pass it on to my colleague, Kelsey, who has a set of questions to ask you. Take it away, Kelsey. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being on here today. I guess our first question for you all is, we just really would love to hear how you developed the campaign initially and how you grew it. Amanda, do you wanna start with this one? Um, yeah, I can start. Um, so I was sort of loosely involved with the No Tech for Ice campaign going on um, in the summer of 2019. Um, so that campaign kind of focused on which corporations, specifically tech corporations, that profited from immigrant detention. Um, and as a result of the work that those activists were doing, um, a, lot a lot of information came to the surface about which corporations um, as a whole were profiting from immigrant detention and private prisons. Um, and I found that many universities were really involved with this. Um, either the prison industrial complex or family separation and immigrant detention. Um, and it, you know, kind of led me to want to research deeper into what the college I was about to enter into as a first year, um, what they were involved in. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a surprise then to learn that we had um, a board of trustee member and our endowment sort of funneled through um, BlackRock, one of the largest um, funders of private prisons, immigrant detention, among a lot of other things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think from, I guess, from like our uh, Amanda's display on like the free wall and then uh, which sort of tied BlackRock to Pitzer, um, it's, we sort of like took the reins and sort of like being the people that were really focusing on educating ourselves and then educating the larger student body. Um, we made a lot of, we started off like making a lot of posters, just getting the information out there. Cause it's a very like, it's not something very simple. They can like find out. It took a lot of work and effort from everybody else to find out all the information. And so the main goal is to like spread all the news as much as we could. Um, and then we, we went out, we reached out to president Melvin Oliver uh, and the, head of the board trustees. Um, do you remember his name again? Um, and Gold? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we talked to them to hear their perspective, like on why we have a, um, a vice chairman of BlackRock on our board trustees and why BlackRock is one of the companies that we choose to invest in endowment with. Um, and then from all that, it was clear that the administration didn't find any of this as being an issue. Um, they, they found as a BlackRock was a virtuous company that was helping them to like strive to for better investments. Um, and so we saw this all as being signs of uh, greenwashing on the behalf of BlackRock, um, giving BlackRock all this good press, saying that pitchers divested because of BlackRock, um, just didn't feel sit right for any of us. And so we continued pushing, pushing until we got wrote the Senate uh, resolution. We spread it to as many students as possible, got as many students as possible to sign on. We had over, I think, 150 signatures from students, and then it eventually got passed in Student Senate 16 to 1, which was amazing. That's really amazing. So 
I guess our next question, you've kind of covered it already, um, but could you expand more on why uh, you chose BlackRock? Uh, yeah, so BlackRock, it's, I suppose it wasn't like a choice as it was like a choice for the administration to work with BlackRock. Um, we doing like basic amounts of in, like research into BlackRock, we found out that the, uh, they're one of the largest investors in um, private prison and detention centers, the largest one of the largest contributors to climate change. Um, and Pitzer being a college that is has very strong core values, uh, two specifically of environmental sustainability and uh, social responsibility. It was clear that our investment practices with our endowment was not fitting those core values. And um, coming after BlackRock and coming after this whole our endowment was more to put Pitzer in line with their in, in line with their core values. Um, and on top of that, um, having allowing BlackRock to work with a, a college such as Pitzer that puts social responsibility and environmental sustainability in the forefront, it we allow ourselves to greenwash on their behalf, which is almost more problematic, as it makes Black it paints BlackRock in the light that they're not causing so much to the environment um, and a lot of people. Yeah. yeah, just to put some of the things that Gaia said into perspective um, of the unethical nature of BlackRock, um, you know, they are the biggest, um, they're one of the biggest shareholders of private prisons and immigrant detention. Um, they have an 11% stake and 12% stake in an 11 stake in core civic and 12% stake in geo group and together those um those investments and those shares are worth 728 million dollars um additionally they're the largest um the largest investor in coal companies around the world um coal-fired utilities oil and gas companies um and companies that are driving deforestation so <laughs> It is incredibly, as Gaia said, it's incredibly contradictory that a uh, school that is uh, that grounds itself in environmental justice and responsibility and social responsibility is um, invested with this uh, asset manager. So I just want to turn to our participants. We have uh, over uh, 34 participants right now. If any of you have any questions, um, for the students or speakers, uh, please go ahead and put them in your chat in the chat box or um, comment on Facebook and uh, we'll hold those questions till the end of the webinar. What I'd like to do now is introduce Cody, our next facilitator, um, and invite Roberta in uh, to the conversation. Great, thanks, Nancy, um, and thanks to all the uh, the awesome folks who've been sharing the stories so far. Um, like Nancy said, this question is for all of the students as well as uh, Roberta. What are the next steps y'all have uh, with their campaign? Yes, thank you so much, everyone, uh, for inviting me <clears throat> and for organizing um, this webinar. I just wanted to say, like, I am so um, impressed and inspired by uh, the organizing that's been happening uh, at Pizza College. Um, as you may know, our campaign really focuses on the climate problem that BlackRock has. And I always look at you all at Pizza to really expose the other problems that BlackRock has, which includes their investments in private prison, detention centers, and the list goes on. And um, so really, yeah, stoked to be here. And uh, in terms of uh, next steps as well, I, I can only speak <laughs> to the climate aspect of it. And I would love to hear from students, what are your next steps so that I can really learn from you and, and support your efforts as well. But um, very briefly, um, for those who don't know, actually in January, uh, Larry Fink, who's the uh, CEO of BlackRock, um, he issued his, uh, an, an annual letter. He does so every year. He, um, over the years, he has positioned himself as the soul of Wall Street. Uh, he goes on every year and sends a message to all the other CEOs of Wall Street and to his clients and basically tell them that we got to do good. Like we don't have to just um, uh, think about profits, but we also have to think about social good. And it's, uh, it's ironic that this message come from, comes from him every year because as the students did a great job at 
uh, exposing um, the issues with BlackRock, they are the largest investors in everything that is nasty on this planet, from human rights abuses to, um, you know, climate destruction companies. And so uh, it's hilarious how Larry Fink is trying to position himself as such leader. Um, and so that's how the campaign was started a couple of years ago, really to um, expose this con contradiction uh, that BlackRock uh, has been driving. And so this year in his annual letter, um, he actually um, announced some very <laughs> policies that um, that are meant to uh, reduce uh, BlackRock's uh, exposure to uh, climate destructive uh, companies. And so in their call policy, they pledged to um, divest uh, some of their money from, uh, from uh, coal uh, companies, but uh, as we, and also they pledged to, to uh, increase the number of ESG funds in their portfolio. And also at some point, a few months later, they also pledged to start working around, um, to start engaging the companies that they're invested in that are driving deforestation and indigenous rights abuses in the Amazon and other, um, and other delicate ecosystems across the globe. But, um, um, as we took a deeper um, look at these announcements and these policies, we noticed that there were just so many flaws and so many loopholes. Um, and so, you know, despite these announcements, actually Black, BlackRock still remains the largest investor in everything that is bad <laughs> on this planet. And so as a campaign right now, we're really continuing to A, um, uh, to pressure them to really keep them accountable for these announcements that they have made. And not only just that, but to improve these policies that they have announced because they're just like very weak. And honestly, they don't do anything in terms of, um, are solving their climate and human rights problems. And so, so that's one thing that we're doing. And then um, the other thing is um, shareholder season is starting. I think it was uh, Diego who mentioned how BlackRock is, also, is the largest, but the nature of its business is the largest shareholder company in a lot of these companies. And so not only they can um, influence companies by threatening to divest their money, but also they can threaten companies and CEOs by via their proxy voting. So as shareholders, they have um, a huge amount of power by voting pro-climate, by voting pro-human rights, uh, by voting uh, pro-indigenous rights. And so like their power is just immense. And so shareholder season is starting in May. And so BlackRock is gonna be able to really vote uh, their conscience at these uh, different AGMs. And so in terms of specific next steps, there's a lot of votes that they can, um, <laughs> that they can really exercise. But there's one particular vote that I wanted to share with you all that I think it's really, really important. So BlackRock is also one of the major shareholders of uh, JP Morgan Chase, which is the worst bank possible in the world. They are also the largest funder, investor of fossil fuels. And, um, and actually, their independent uh, board chair, one of the most powerful men on the planet, uh, his name is Lee Raymond, and he calls all the shots at Chase, especially now that the CEO of Chase is um, recovering from an illness. And so, um, so there's going to be a vote uh, um, in, in JP Morgan Chase AGM, where basically BlackRock has the power to uh, vote against the re-election of Lee Raymond. And so why is this important? Lee Raymond, uh, for those who don't know, He's actually um, the former. Um, he's actually the former CEO and board me member of Exxon, and so he spent his entire career um, basically funding uh, research to um, to deny uh, the existence of uh, climate change and also to really um, manipulate the conversation happening around climate change. He's, he was also part of the Exxon New. Um, so really just like he knew very well what the issues with climate change were, but he did the very best. Like he used all his power and money and resources to make sure that there was not going to be any action taken uh, in terms of tackling climate change. And um, he was also uh, on the board of the API, which is the American Petroleum Institute, which is one of the biggest influential groups from the fossil fuel industry out there. And right now, you know, he's on the board of Chase. And so if you ever wonder how come Chase is not taking any action to tackle climate change, it's because of Lee Raymond. And so 
So I really want to invite you all to stay tuned. We are organizing a series of calling actions to really get BlackRock to vote Lee Raymond off the board of Chase. So I will follow up with more details, but that's, um, it's going to be so critical that BlackRock hears from you all and thousands of other activists across the U.S. because their vote uh, has so much power and influence. And we can absolutely, absolutely get a huge bank like Chase to change. We uh, it on their the Instagram. If we get off, uh, if we get Lee Raymond off the board, so um, yes, thank you, and stay tuned. I will send you more details soon. Cheers. Thank you, Roberta, for sharing your next steps. Uh, let's go ahead and hear what the next steps are for the uh, Pitzer College students. Um, yeah, so definitely like uh, dealing with the issues Roberta um, mentioned. Um, and having the conversations around those are huge. Um, we have compiled a lot of research and um, luckily we were able to bring that research to Student Senate and get our resolution passed. Um, as it currently stands, we are trying to bring that resolution to College Council, which at our college is comprised of faculty, staff, um, and students. and that council will be responsible for voting on it um, whenever the council reconvenes. Obviously, this is a very up in the air kind of situation, um, but we are currently lobbying for that to be voted on um, because at that point, once college council approves of uh, our divestment, um, fully from from BlackRock and from these issues, um, we hope that President Melvin Oliver will sign off on it and we will fully be divested. Um, we are aware that there is a huge potential for Melvin Oliver to veto um, this bill once it gets passed. Um, but I can let one of the other activists sort of speak on that. Yeah, um, I can speak to that a little. Um, so yeah, as Amanda mentioned, there is a huge um, possibility that Melvin Oliver, um, with you know the history of uh, some undemocratic nature in the past, um, you know, there's a huge possibility that he can that he will veto this. And so, you know, we're taking the institutional route for now. You know, we are. Um, we passed this through through student senate and now it's moving on to the next governing body you know college council and uh we think this is the best option to do first before you know we take any action that is that is outside of the institutional realm whether that be a college shutdown which uh, i think some of my uh, some of my other colleagues can speak to that um but yeah um knowing that he can um, veto this at any moment and knowing that he has vetoed very important um, legislation in the past, such as our BDS bill, well, our um, suspension from the university, the Israeli University of Haifa. Um, you know, I think what we want to do is really educate a lot of the people um, at our college and at the other four colleges because when reflecting, you know, as a coalition, I think we reflected a lot on last year's um, suspension of the Israeli University of Haifa uh, study abroad program that we have. Um, you know, we thought that we needed to divest from that study abroad program because it discriminated um, students on the basis of ethnicity and religion. Um, so and we thought uh, Pitzer was being complicit when, with uh, Palestinian oppression and in the Israeli-Palestine conflict. Um, so what we learned from reflecting on that is that, you know, Hello. popular mobilization really does work, you know? We really can make an institutional change if, um, you know, if all students, if masses of students are educated and are passionate about this issue. I think that's what really resulted from um, last year's movement to suspend the University of Haifa program, study abroad program. And so I think that's always 
an essential next step for any movement, you know, this uh, education of, 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 all, of all people, um, because we want people to know that, we want people to strive for ethical investment. We want these private institutions, these huge multinational corporations to strive for ethical investment and nothing less. You know, we want people to know, we want um, people to know that we're not gonna stand by when private institutions are profiting handsomely from, as Roberta mentioned, you know, some of the most unethical practices in the US. And we want people to, we want to show people that it is possible um, in this incredibly unethical capitalist world that you can value people over profit. Um, and I think maybe just one more thing to add. Um, also, can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, so we, we mentioned, you know, a lot of the, there's a growing sentiment in the Pixar community. Um, there are a lot of people are disillusioned with, you know, the undemocratic nature of, um, you know, the executive administrators in the past who really are the power holders in the situation. Um, as were demonstrated when Melvin Oliver vetoed the, um, to suspend the Haifa uh, program. Um, so there are, there are a range of actions, right, that we can take that fall under this realm of civil disobedience. Um, and that would just require us to organize even further, especially with other um, student organizations that have similar stakes um, uh, in this issue, in, you know, in the issues that BlackRock's invested in. Um, so if you're a student um, watching this right now and are part of an organization um, that is affected by issues that you know, BlackRock is invested in, please reach out um, and we would love to organize further with, with you all, faculty as well. Um, and that's something we're already in the process of doing, um, certain affinity groups, certain departments um, that have shown support. Um, and I think beyond that as well, um, you know, Pittsburgh's one school that has this kind of relationship with BlackRock um, so also looking beyond Pitzer and organizing with other institutions uh, and other organizations um, that are also in the same fight, sort of like Roberta um, was touching on, um, and really um, trying to combine all our forces. And because and, and, um, if one of them, you know, one of us hits them, you know, it might slightly give a dent or something, um, but we'd have much more power if we were organizing. Um, across, you know, a widespread coalition of different institutions um, and organizations. Um, so, yeah, I think that was just one thing I wanted to add about looking beyond the campus as well um, and really thinking um, about the issues on a more macro level. Nice. Cool, thanks Esteban. And I think that on that, on that same vein, is there any other um, lessons that any of y'all have to pass off for other students who are looking to start similar divestment campaigns uh, on their campuses as well? Um, yeah, I can speak to this a little bit. Um, <clears throat> you know, we've definitely, it's been a, a learn as we go um, process. Um, people like uh, Diego worked on the, the Haifa campaign before, so um, and and Dan Siegel as well. Um, so we we bringing in people that have you know dealt with similar campaigns in the past has has uh, been a huge help. And that would be one point of advice is to um, reach out to those kind of individuals who have experience um, in these kind of campaigns and movements. Um, with that, just being persistent and keeping the conversation always kind of constructive, always positive in the sense of that you're creating um, new ideas or you're uh, asking new questions and you're being persistent and you're not letting up, um, especially when you're going against a, a school like Pitzer and a uh, you know, company like BlackRock who have, who, who have gone through this you know, before with other organizations and, and kind of have a lot of experience fighting back. Um, so being persistent and, and keeping the pressure is extremely important. And something we've been talking already about before, um, organizing with as many community members as possible, you know, looking for that common denominator with a lot of other groups and organizations 
you know, looking at what the actual points of unity are that appeal to different groups in the community and bringing them all in. Because I'm sure, you know, the, the more you dig deep and the more you, you know, more research you do and the more conversations you have with different people, you start to realize that you know, there is a common denominator that everyone can organize around. Um, anticipating counter arguments from the school and the company is, is, has been huge. Um, so we can kind of be, um, when we kind of expect these responses, we're, you know, we're ready with things to say about them. And they're usually kind of these very capitalist for profit, you know, arguments that um, have a certain logic. And when you understand that, there are, there are ways to, you know, present different logics like putting people before profit or putting the environment um, before profit. Um, and I'll add one more thing and then, you know, other people can add stuff in, but um, a big one was meeting people where they're at. Um, you know, a lot of people are, you know, were ready to get down immediately and, you know, already sort of know the nature of um, companies like BlackRock. Um, but a lot of people, you sort of have to walk them through the steps and, you know, walk them through the arguments in a way that resonates with them. Um, and not jumping immediately at, you know, the, the core, the core of it, but sort of meeting them where they're at, understanding their perspective and their background and, and getting them to where you're at and not judging someone immediately because they're, they're not in favor of the, of the movement. Yeah, I, I want to add something to that. Um, it's really important to meet people where they're at, you know, and I think this, I think like it, um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, like we want uh, the masses of people to be educated and organized, you know, and I think meeting people where they're at, you know, is a Im really important um, aspect of popular education, you know, um, you can't expect everyone to be at the uh, at where, where you're at, you know, and so it's important to meet those people where they're at and help them understand and help yourself understand that this issue is very interconnected and that this organizer that you were, you know, trying to build a coalition with also has a stake in this because as we've seen, BlackRock is invested in some of the most unethical things and, you know, a plethora of unethical things in across the world. So I think it's really important to meet people where they're at, you know, it's integral to popular education. Um, and one thing I did want to add, uh, I guess another, um, point of advice is coalition building. You know, I can't stress enough how important coalition building is. As Esteban mentioned earlier, um, we've been getting a lot of help, you know, and just support um, from Students for Justice in Palestine. You know, this is something that uh, they really care about as well. And so that has helped us out a lot because, you know, um, <clears throat> they are a very organized club on campus. And, you know, as, Esteban mentioned this was a learn as we go, you know, process. So there was ups and downs in like the movement, you know, there was um, a lack of dialogue at one point, you know, dialogue was being stifled because, you know, the, because this was just such a controversial issue on campus. But, um, you know, getting the support from clubs like Students for Justice in Palestine was huge, you know, because um, their club members were immediately in support and were willing to help in any way. So coalition building can be really important and helpful. Yeah, I think my own um, biggest piece of advice is that like, no matter like how daunting a task may seem, I feel like all, like anything is possible. Um, a lot of this, like this issue seemed like it, it would take years to like even address, to like make it to this point. But just from like the hard work of a couple of people, we managed to like make huge strides and have this resolution passed. Um, and with that, like you, if you're trying to do any kind of activism work, being a student and then trying to change your college, you really need to be like, the biggest thing is to be educated because when you're trying to make a call, uh, like to make any, um, movement like this, the administration, the staff always assumes that you come from a place of ignorance. And so any communication they have with you, they try and, um, sort of belittle your understanding. They try and talk down to you. And then just telling, coming back with like, uh, you do you do know the facts, you do know the research and that the things they're saying, some of them like are just false, some of them are misconstrued, all these things. 
are ways and tactics for them to like put you down and being prepared to rebuttal and being very like confident in all the research that you have done is extremely essential in making any of these moves successful. Yeah, definitely like the preparation aspect of things um, and coalition building as Diego and Esteban uh, mentioned, just the fact that BlackRock was um, or still is involved in so many different issues. Um, there are many different groups, whether it's Students for Justice in Palestine or um, respective affinity groups um, or the Sunrise Movement, whose students have been doing a lot of really great work. Um, they all have this connection of BlackRock funding these things um, and money really does, you know, push these things further. Um, and without the funding, a lot of these issues wouldn't be as prevalent as they are. And so BlackRock being the root of a lot of these issues um, was very important and very important to, to let people know this issue impacts everyone, really. Um, and yeah, and just um, as Gaia mentioned, like continually fighting. Um, you are, as, as a student activist, you're going to be, you know, put down because the administration assumes you don't know what you're talking about. Um, or they make the assumption that, you know, there's something else behind it or you just, you know, want to protest about something in reality. Um, you know, this is a major corporation that is um, knowingly taking part in a lot of these things. Um, and just knowing that as a student activist, like what you do does matter. Um, you know, the, the work of Pitzer students in the past trying to have us divest fully from fossil fuels um, and still some questions raised about that. Um, but the, the work those uh, protesters and activists have done in the past, um, the work of Sunrise Movement kids across the nation, um, and even back in the 80s with the divestment from South Africa, um, you know, those were extremely impactful movements. And it really shows the power and the effort of student leaders. Um, and despite, you know, the emotional and mental toll that it takes, um, and the fact that, you know, we are full-time students and then sometimes, uh, you know, full-time full -time activists. Sorry about that. Yeah, I do have a bird. Um, the, um, the fact is that we're not compensated for our work, but we go about these things because we do truly care about the change that is going to come from them. So knowing that, um, when things do get really difficult, because they, they will get difficult. Great. Thank you all. So a final question before we move over to uh, Q&A. Um, so uh, knowing that a lot of us are under a stay at home order, um, how can people get involved um, immediately from their homes? Do you all have any suggestions? Uh, yeah, so we have a, um, we have like an online change.org petition set up that people can fill out. You can send it to anybody and everybody to have, uh, to have them fill up. So I'm fine out. We're just trying to get uh, as many signatures as possible just to show that, just to show the Pitzer administration, more specific, specifically Melvin Oliver, our president, that people really do care about this year. And this is some change that they really do want. And that hits their needs to hold that they're uh, to hold true to their core values. Yeah, and I think in addition to that, just knowing, um, you know, taking time for yourself is okay. Um, this is obviously a pretty unprecedented time for everybody. Um, and I think a lot of people have this feeling that we have to be productive in, um, in isolation, and it's very difficult. Um, I myself, I, I've lost somebody to COVID-19 and I'm sure, you know, it's an issue impacting almost everybody. Um, and so taking time for yourself that, you know, that rest is resistance um, and making sure that you get what you need um, 
especially for student activists, we've also got all of our, our courses going on and dealing with, um, you know, how are our grades going to turn out? How is, you know, the rest of this going to turn out in the midst of, you know, what feels like the end of the world sometimes, um, you know, dealing with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Your rest is resistance. I think that's also just really important. Well, I just want to thank you all for joining and taking time out and so sorry to hear about your loss, Amanda. You all are just an inspiration and your tenacity and your persistency is so inspiring um, to us. And um, what I'm going to do now um, is I'm going to pass it over to Carly. Uh, Carly has been collecting um, the questions from our participants. So Carly, you want to take it away? Sure. Thanks, Nancy. Um, so thanks for everyone who has submitted questions in the Q&A chat box. Um, you know, it looks like all of the questions that were submitted have a very similar theme. So I'm going to combine them um, and ask the students and also Roberta if you could answer. Um, a lot of people are interested in hearing more about um, what are what your plans are for reinvestment, right? So um, I think a lot of people on this call understand or on board with um, the fact that BlackRock is invested in these terrible companies, um, but they're wondering what can we place our endowment in? What should we be investing in? And just curious if you all have any thoughts on that. Um, so the first question was directed at Roberta, so maybe we can start with Roberta and then move on to the students. Uh, yes, I, um, I am sure that the students have done research in terms of finding alternative asset managers to BlackRock, and so I will let them speak um, on that. Um, generally speaking, um, the asset management world, just because capitalism sucks, uh, it's really hard to find a good one. And so I think there's a question of like reinventing the whole system, to be honest. Um, and so um, there is no like good actor out there. Uh, what I will say is that there are better actors. And so um, there are potentially uh, other asset managers that pizza could, um, could contract out and, um, and really um, send a message to BlackRock. Like you're gonna lose one of your um, important clients because honestly, university endowments are huge clients for, for BlackRock. And so it would send a huge uh, signal to the asset management industry that you know, they're willing to um, take their money away from BlackRock unless uh, they see a change. And so, um, so that's one point. There are other asset managers that are a little bit better. And I actually wanted to share a report that one of our partners released uh, recently. Um, they're called Share Action. And um, they recently released a, um, a scorecard. And so they looked at asset managers, not just in the US, but also from Europe. Um, and uh, they basically uh, graded them like based on uh, their investments. Um, I think it was mostly focused on climate. Um, and, uh, and so you can see that there are some asset managers in Europe that they're way better than um, the asset managers in the US. You will see in this report that all the US asset managers are just the biggest laggards. And so they're all terrible. Um, and um, I just wanted to also um, let everyone know that a very, um, something that happened in January, it was either like at the end of December or January, actually uh, Japan's government pension investment fund, which I think it's worth $1.6 trillion, um, they actually moved their money out of BlackRock because at that time BlackRock was not um, really uh, taking any action on climate. They moved their money out of BlackRock and they basically opened a contract with um, uh, a European, a European asset manager company, legal in general, uh, which you know they're more aligned to um, to uh, the the pension fund uh, sets of values, and so it's totally doable. The other option is like Peter, they could manage their own funds in house. That's some something that universities do. Uh, I think, for example, I went to UC Berkeley, um, so this may be outdated uh, information, but when I was a student and I was also um, uh, helping with a, with a divestment campaign, if I remember correctly, the UCs, they managed their assets in-house. They did not have external asset managers, so that's an option too. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of like my share on this, but I'm sure the students probably even have specific recommendation. So I'll pass it on to the students. 
Yeah, I mean, to I'm sure Gaia has the specifics on um, particular groups if we choose that route. Um, but yeah, also CalPERS, um, just the California um, state employees, uh, their board of administration also um, sought to divest from oil and gas um, and to sort of be more engaged um, with access and be more engaged with workers' rights and, um, you know, a more ethical um, standpoint when it came to investing. So, you know, it's also something that had um, happened here in California. Um, and I think back in like 2009, um, Columbia University divested from private prisons. Um, so it is not a radical notion. It is not out of the, um, out of the realm of possibility. It is something that has been done before. Um, and it's, it's not a huge ask, but yeah, yeah. I think Gaia has the specifics on groups. Yeah. Um, so giving like a little bit of background before I like talk about that, um, Pitzer, Pitzer was once invested in fossil fuels. And so in 20, I believe it was 2012, we made the decision to divest. And then 2014, we eventually, uh, invested alongside BlackRock. Um, and so like the steps to investing is like uh, disclose, divest and reinvest. And Pitzer did a great job of disclosing that like we were invested in fossil fuels and then divesting from fossil fuels. However, they made, they made that false step of uh, reinvesting alongside BlackRock. Um, and so our, the main, the, our goal is to make sure that that last step is fall through in like a correct way. And so one of the things that we have in our resolution is to um, make sure that the decision as to where they choose to invest their endowment next is one that's decided by a larger discussion that's not limited just to the administration. Um, so that would be like a discussion including faculty, staff, and students as well. Um, this way, it's like something that encompasses a larger body than just the faculty or just the administration. Um, ask, answering like a little bit more specific funds that we found our asset manager that we found ourselves. Um, we found a little bit of information about uh, Calvert Asset Management, uh, Trillium, and Boston Common Asset Management. Those three are like the, t the three ones that we found to be like the most, uh, I guess, socially responsible in a sense. Um, but also, I did read this, um, the uh, share action um, file, which is awesome, uh, listing the top 40 uh, largest asset management companies across the, like, across the world and ranking them all. And honestly, if we find something that's like an asset manager on that list as well, that could also definitely be a, a great opportunity for Pitcher to divest instead. What's really difficult is that as we're the student, the, the activists putting on like the burden of like pushing our college to do more, people also expect us to be the ones to like uh, reach out to these asset management companies, uh, create the contracts, do X, Y, Z. When in reality, we're full-time students. We're not we don't have finance degrees. We're not being paid by our college. Um, our job has, I think, and we, I think we've been doing it almost perfectly is to disclose what Pitcher has been doing, like the investment that Pitcher has been having, um, what's wrong with it, how it doesn't fit with our core values and that, and raising the, raising the question that we should be divesting and finding something uh, that is morally correct to invest ourselves with. Yeah, the disclose aspect of things has definitely been, um, where uh, not only Pitzer, but most colleges have fallen short. Um, obviously, back in 2012, the disclosure aspect um, was really pushed by student activists. Um, and it's troubling that many of these colleges and universities hide their investments to begin with. Um, and what we found throughout um, the past year is that, um, you know, there's a lot of red tape that they want to put up in front of um, their investments and there's a reason for that um, and it's really because their investments aren't ethical and their investments don't um, you know fall within the core values of the school particularly pertaining to Pitzer um, but yeah so that's also just very important to note that the, the disclosure aspect of it amongst everything else is a lot of burden placed on the students um, where it shouldn't be.
Awesome. Thanks, um, everyone, for kind of offering your thoughts on that. So those were the questions that people have. Um, it looks like, um, let's see, we have some comments um, from community members too. You know, it's important to address that um, the code pink on our divest from the war machine campaign. Um, I just wanted to um, let people know that if you go to that website, I posted in the chat box, we'll also send it to you via email. Um, we have an entire um, uh, place where you can search actually funds. Um, uh, it's called, we have a, sorry, a fund searcher is called weapons free funds manager. And you can go and search and see if the things that you're invested in um, is invested in weapon stocks or um, weapons manufacturers. So if you go to our website, um, you can check out and search the funds that you're invested in by name and see if they're invested in, in weapons manufacturers. So there are actually tools out there that can help you as well see what these asset managers and financial firms are actually invested in. So I just wanted to draw people's attention to that too. And it's in the chat box. So that's awesome. Um, and then just one more thing that before we move on to next steps and um, kind of wrap up, I just wanted to say that one question that somebody had, it seems pretty simple, that they're asking about the research that students have done on this issue. Is there a place where fellow students who are wanting to get involved can find that research? So where can people find that research that you all have been mentioning? Um, yeah, we created a sort of a Q&A PowerPoint, which will have like, um, what is BlackRock? And then answer those questions for you. And so we've created that and we can, um, send it to you guys and it can be sent to everybody that's been a part of this uh, live stream. Um, and we also have a reader, no? We also yeah. Have a, yeah. Yeah. So there's also a reader that we can share with links and information. Um, yeah. Fantastic. And um, all of the specific um, asset managers that you all mentioned, um, we can also send that out because somebody was asking about that in the Q&A. So we can send that information as well. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to thank everyone again for joining us on this webinar and for, to the students for your knowledge and all of your energy that you've put into this campaign. It's been very inspiring to hear from you. Um, and also, thank you, Roberta, for joining us and um, telling us a little bit more about how BlackRock is invested, unfortunately, in the companies that are driving climate change. Um, you know, one thing that I think is really important about this webinar is that students at Pittsburgh College have shown that even though BlackRock is um, the largest financial asset manager in the world, you can actually take it on in your local communities. Um, and this is really the ethos that um, drives our entire Divest from the War Machine campaign at Code Pink. So I quickly just wanted to share my screen and show some folks some um, next steps and resources that Code Pink has in case anyone is interested in um, also starting their own Divest campaign on their campus or in their community. So let me go ahead and share that with folks so you can see. All right, hopefully folks can see my screen. Um, so um, as I said, um, Code Pink has also a Divest from the War Machine campaign. You can find more information about this at codepink.org slash divest. Um, our campaign is really focused, as I said, on making sure that people in their local communities can organize against the war machine and its various, um, all the various forms that it takes. One of the things that we talk about is divesting from BlackRock. We're also um, really interested in making sure that local communities can divest from weapons manufacturers in um, their city, but so local cities invest in these, but also university endowments invest in specifically weapons manufacturers. So it's really important that people feel empowered to take on these weapons manufacturers and BlackRock in their local communities. So I just wanted to share with everyone some next steps that people can take um, in order to start doing that right now. Um, so everyone here has heard about all of the awful things that BlackRock is invested in, um, from private prison companies to uh, fossil fuel companies. And then of course, importantly, BlackRock is the largest um, investor in weapons manufacturers in the world. And we're telling Larry Fink to divest from war. Um, and so you can go to codepink.org slash Larry Fink to sign our petition asking Larry Fink to divest from the war machine. Um, 
And then I also wanted to draw people's attention to the fact that, again, we need to start these kinds of campaigns to divest from war and divest from BlackRock in our local communities all across the country in order to build a groundswell of support. So we wanted to invite folks to sign up to join our Start a Divest campaign by going to the link here. It's just bit.ly slash divest sign up. And a Code Pink organizer will be in contact with you to talk more about starting your own campaign. So those are my next steps. Um, Nancy, did you want to close out? Okay, well, let's just close out with um, see if anyone has any last words that they would like to share with the participants. Again, I want to thank the participants for joining today and asking um, uh, the tough questions uh, for our panelists. Um, but is there any final words? Um, Dan, we haven't heard anything from you. Um, you'd like to add, would you like to add anything? I'll just say that how inspiring it is to have students who are accepting the responsibility as citizens and the responsibility of their education. Education gives us more power to produce a humane future. And if we don't take that with our education, we are not accepting the responsibility of it. And these students are the very exemplar, the very highest model of doing that. And there's nothing more satisfactory and rewarding for me as a faculty member who's taught at Pitzer for over 30 years um, to have students embrace with radical love that responsibility of their education to produce a better world. Um, and you know, for me, I've recently become a grandfather and I wanna thank them for my two beautiful little granddaughters and for all of the world's precious babies. Um, we need the work these students are doing. And I know several of my faculty colleagues are listening and I wanna urge you um, to join these students and support them and broaden the support from the faculty for this social justice movement. Pitzer's radical past deserves the radical future these students are trying to make happen. And I just wanna thank them. Amen. So on that, we will go ahead and close um, our uh, webinar for today. And we look forward to taking action with you all in the future. Thank you.